everybody, welcome back to my channel. That's Friday Homeschool. I'm Mrs. T and today we're going to be taking a look at Evan Moore's Skill Sharpeners. This is the critical thinking book for pre-K. Now we are about halfway through, so it's missing half of its pages here. So I wanted to give you just our review and a general flip through of some of the content that we have and have not done yet. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So the way that this book is broken down is you have four different sections or four major themes. You are going to be covering insects, weather, transportation, and also, gosh, what's the last one? Community. And within those four major sections or major themes, you'll have two subsections. So for example, when you're going into that insect section, which is the very first one, you'll be working first butterflies and grasshoppers. <laughs> and then the second one is going to be honeybees and ladybugs. So um, you do spend a little bit of time on both of these topics. Now there's no sugar coating it. This is a workbook. Your child is going to be having their crayons, their pens, their pencils, etc. And they're mostly going to be sitting down and working through a workbook. Now one thing that this does do is it basically takes these topics and it marries them to other common things that you would work with with your preschooler. So you're practicing things like counting, color identification, you're practicing your vocabulary, um, sometimes letter recognition and things like that. So it is very, I guess, I'm really, ha I'm really struggling with putting into words, but it does take a lot of, it basically takes the topic, the area that it's focusing on, and it pulls in a lot of common things that your preschooler should be working on. And it kind of hones in those skills. Now it does call itself the critical thinking book. And while I see it has a little bit of thinking outside the box, I would not really call it a critical thinking book. Uh, to me, it's definitely more like a common theme book <laughs> um, that's focused on preschool activities. All right, so let's go ahead and just take a look at one of these sections here. We're going to start with the butterflies and grasshoppers. So the way that each section starts is you get some sort of little nonfiction something. In this case, it's two different life cycle graphs, or not graphs, but life cycle graphics. And it will show you the life cycle of the butterfly and the grasshopper. You then move into directly into um, an activity that's going to be more or less testing your knowledge. Did you retain something that you just learned on the page before? So in this case, we did a little bit of cutting and pasting of the butterfly life cycle. And we had a little, um, a little read aloud, a little poem. I think it was not a poem, but it was a little, a little cute passage. And then we had a question. So in this case, it's asking your child to circle what was his favorite between the grasshopper and the butterfly. Now my child circled both and I had him just tell me what he liked about each um, insect because he couldn't choose. So he said he liked that butterflies can fly and he likes that the grasshoppers can hoppity hop. So great. <laughs> we then moved into a couple other activities and I'm just going to show you a few of these pages. They're all basically the same. You do get a lot of tracing and identification practice. You get some cutting and paste practice with each section. But one thing that is also a very common theme is you're going to be getting a color by number and color by word um, design. This is in like every single section. If your kid is like mine, my kid does not like coloring. He very often, occasionally he's in the mood, mostly he's not. Uh, so we kind of tweak it a little bit. So we have done where he just circles with a pen or a crayon the correct color. Or we do those like dot stickers, or we've even done like dot, like the do a dot art, um, the little paints, we've done that. And that's been a better fit. Now I know that your child is supposed to be practicing their coloring skills, but it was just more tedious than it needed to be for my child. Um, the other thing that they do often is they incorporate math into each section where you're counting and you're answering some basic questions. So here's one page where you're just counting the number of butterflies. And then on this page over here, you are counting how many objects are in each column and then your child is identifying which is more. So while I love these math activities, and I think they're great. One thing I will note is my child um, penmanship wise is not at a point where he can independently write numbers. He can identify them, but he still needs to see it. 
So where I think this could have really improved is if they had like a number line at the very top. What we ended up doing um, with these earlier ones is I would write the number and he would try to copy it next to it. Um, but later I did end up just writing the numbers zero through 10, I think. Zero, yeah, I think it was zero through 10. Um, but we, I just had him kind of like have a reference point. So it would have been nice to have that kind of reference point. If your preschooler is a little bit older or maybe they're just really good at pen control, that might not be a concern for you. Now each little subsection does wrap up with a quote unquote bigger project. Bigger project is just something that takes a little bit more time and it almost all includes cutting and pasting and making a little something. So for this one, you're making a little caterpillar on a leaf, the bumblebee, make like a 3D little bumblebee. Um, we had like a weather wheel that we made, for example. So it's something that's a little bit more time consuming my child is still working on their scissor skills. So while he's able to cut out like the puzzle pieces and the squares pretty well on his own, um, that leaf was pretty challenging. So like the curve of it was pretty difficult. So I actually was basically completely holding that page and trying to help him through it. All right, so that is the section that we have done. Um, the sections are all basically the same. <laughs> okay, so here's the next little section I wanted to show you. This is about homes in, my, in the community, and this is near the end of the book. So you can see here, you're learning a little bit about the different types of homes. And then you have a little, very simple, is it a home? Um, can you live, or do you want to live in the home? So you're kind of evaluating different pictures of homes and just having your child answer some basic questions. We then have a section here where we're identifying the different materials that are built in a home and some cutting and gluing of different shapes. So we're practicing some identification, our scissor skills, we're building a house here, we're drawing our own house, and then we're using a connect the dots here to show a house. We have a, a little bit more of a complex maze than the first one that I showed you guys, and yet another color by number. So my child is probably not gonna be super keen on the color by number, but we will come up with a different solution for that one. And then we should be at the bigger project here. Okay, and then here we have like a, a little matching and then we're going to be building our own house. All right, let's flip you back around. All in all, this thing, I'll put the price of this. Um, Evan Moore workbooks are their workbooks. The question that you would need to ask yourself is, do workbooks have a spot in my homeschooling? Now for us, the answer is yes, but kind of a little bit more sparingly. We do not sit down and do workbooks every day. We just don't. Um, he's in preschool and I just don't find that it's something that um, is as enjoyable for us as it is to do other things. So originally our intention was to go through one of those small little critical thinking subsections in like a week and then move on to the next one. Instead of what we ended up doing is we did one of those subsections in about two-ish weeks and we really supplemented with the with literature and um, we did Play-Doh. So for example, for this uh, particular one, we made little Play-Doh caterpillars. We made little Play-Doh chrysalis and cocoons. And then we also made little Play-Doh butterflies. And we made our own little life cycles kind of more 3D and hands-on. And then they played with Play-Doh for a while. So that worked out really well. I do really like the things that come in here and I do really like this workbook, but I'm just not using it as quickly as I originally imagined and that's okay. One of the really nice things about Evan Moore, and this is for all the workbooks I've seen of theirs, is they're very colorful. And I also love that the pages can easily tear out. Oftentimes, I feel like when I look at other workbooks, those pages are not easy to take out. But for my child, being able to have only present him one page at a time is very important. He would definitely get overwhelmed if I handed him this book. Even if I just said, just do this page, I think it would overwhelm him a little bit but that's just because he's a preschooler. <laughs> you know, he's not even four and that's okay. Um, but 
all in all, I would definitely recommend this. I recommend it if you're looking for some really basic science, really basic um, way to springboard into a topic. And I really enjoy it. I enjoy it. We have purchased a number of Evan Moore books. So once we finish off this one, we will be moving into more. And um, yeah, that's about it. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Have you used Evan Moore workbooks before? What about this one? What did your family think? All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.